be engaged as we talk about a, a number of concerns right here on Boston Praise Radio and TV. We're going to go to the phone lines right now and actually see who's on the line uh, with us this morning. Good morning. I have both lines uh, open, and who's there? This is your compatriot and colleague and anything else you want to call. You don't want to leave it open like that. But <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I see. I understand. I, I, I think yeah. you. I think you think you're dealing with Christians, but oh, be that as it may, it sounds like the other gentleman from Tennessee is um, is on the line. Randy. Yes. Good morning, brothers. Good morning. Good to be here with you. Good morning. Great to to have you with us. Also. Uh, as What's you, the weather like up in Boston? Oh, man, it's raining again every single day. It's been oh, raining. I, I, can't, well, I can't mow I my lawn. Uh, the, the neighbors are petitioning. They want me out of the neighborhood <laughs> because of the condition of my lawn. And, uh, I, and I said to them, I said, if you saw Pastor Randy and Pastor Davis's lawn, you would leave me alone. <laughs> you know, you're, you're right. If you <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm fortunate. <coughs> I'm fortunate to do a lot of things, but one is not gardening or things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I apologize to you both, but it's a beautiful day here in Chattanooga. When you say beautiful, what's the temperature? Uh, it started out in the uh, mid 60s. It'll wow. get up to 88. Oh my wow. goodness. Today. We are nowhere near that. Uh, you, do you know we had to put the heat on in the sanctuary last Sunday uh, for the service? Yeah, we sure, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm such a cold-natured person. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I had to, well, the heat comes on here in, in our home as well. Uh, it's now mm -hmm. it's now a balmy fifty-six. Oh, oh man! Wow! Uh -huh. Wow! Well, enjoy it. Enjoy it if you can. It's uh, nice, crisp weather. But uh, I was uh, planting, uh, I was planting azalea bushes this morning. Oh my gosh! Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh my gosh! I mean, when I walked into the church on Sunday, it was a little bit. It was cold. I could feel it, and I said, "I said I could handle this because I'll put my robe on." Mm. But then a few people started approaching me, looking, g giving me that stare, and I know what that <laughs> meant. Uh, it's cold, and we have we have a group of people who are just cold you know mm -hmm. and, and and i just could see them coming over and complaining i said you know what so i put the i put the heat on and we, i put it on not 60 68 69 i had to put it up to 70 to heat the mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. that's Ooh, crazy 70, 70. Oh, that's crazy yeah. uh, uh, my, uh, my wife has bad feelings about people in dorchester <laughs> because uh, we were up there once in November, okay, and the people were saying, you know, we New Englanders, we don't turn the heat on until after Thanksgiving. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> wow. And my, wife, my wife was about to turn the heat on. Let me tell you. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh. Wow. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm telling you, do not <laughs> like the cold. Uh, uh. No, no. Uh, if you want to get me to confess everything, anything, Put me in a cold room. Okay. I'll tell everything. Yeah. Uh huh. Let's wow. do that, Bruce. Let's get it. Ah! <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I took the Lindbergh baby. I did all of that. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that's Put funny. Me in a cold room. That's funny. Uh -huh. I took the Lindbergh. He's confessing everything. He's confessing. <laughs> he's confessing things that he didn't even do. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, my wife is just uh. the opposite. Um. <laughs> She oh oh no I she'll come into the room oh, oh God it's so hot in here wow so uh, mm. oh Lord no mm -mm. well um, you know um you know as you as you, as you guys may or may not know today is the day to, uh, tonight as a matter of fact at uh, starting at six o'clock is the is the day and the time that we're going to be saying goodbye to uh, Daniel Janey his service uh -huh. is going to be tonight at Twelfth Baptist Church in Roxbury and. We're all preparing to be there to uh, celebrate his life and to say goodbye to a very good friend. Randy, did you know Dan Janey at all? I just met him briefly 
years okay. and years ago. Okay, okay. And I was talking to uh, Oliver Tremue last night about him. And right. He, uh, he remembers him with uh, deep affection. Right. The days that uh, uh, Oliver was at seminary and fellowshipping with people at 12 Baptist. Right, right. Um, and and, and his, his service is going to be a combination of two churches celebrating him, the church, his his family's church, which is 12th Baptist, and our church, which is where he has been for well over 26 years. Mm. It's it's going mm. to be the elected officials in the community because he was politically engaged and an advisor mm. to many politicians that are in office now and who are no longer in office and people in the community in the social worker world and, and and a gentleman in our church who is a returning citizen approached me last sunday with tears in his eyes he, he just learned about dan's um passing i think on sunday morning and he said to me that he was in a very very desperate place uh, wanting to take his life and he was incarcerated mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and Dan, who was a counselor in uh, the correctional institution, engaged him. And mm -hmm. when Dan was through, uh, the gentleman said he wanted to live. And Hallelujah. He, he never knew that he would end up in the same church uh, as, as Dan Janey. Yeah, so there'll be a lot of stories like that. And mm -hmm. so I just wanted to, to bring that to you as we think of, you know what it makes you do when a, when you're, when a lifelong friend dies what it makes me do anyway is do you guys have your home going your funeral arrangements all done and in a specific place that your family and church can retrieve them when your time comes uh i don't they pretty much know my wishes um in terms of uh the type of home going service. I would Wait want. a minute. Wait, I'm not included in because I have some thoughts regarding your home going service. Oh, but oh no 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 uh, no we we've included you. Oh, I've, okay. I've had some thoughts in the past too, mostly cement barrels. And <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could depend on you. Folks. <laughs> uh, I know uh, uh. we would say forget what he wrote. We have some uh, ideas uh, right uh. here, <laughs> Randy. Uh. Randy, what about you? Are you are you set? Yeah, I've I've done it a few times. Uh, of course, you know when I went to war for the army, they make you fill out a will. Uh, everybody has to make out a will before we leave. Yeah. And power of attorney. Yeah. And so I made some notes then. I've done it uh, since then. The only problem is, you know, you do it. You put it somewhere, then you forget where you put it, <laughs> and you, you know your family will never find They'll it. They'll never uh, find it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you only have, you know, it's interesting when someone dies, there really isn't a lot of time mm. between the time they pass and then the time that the actual service takes place. Uh -huh. And there's, you know, and they're in grief and they're right. mourning. Right. And they're trying to uh, work out with the funeral home, all the arrangements. Right. And it's usually only until later, maybe as they're going through the papers, mm. they go, oh, Here's the here are the hymns that, mm -hmm. and so some years ago, uh, I I produced a document and I gave it to everybody in the church and I said fill this out, mm -hmm. and then I want to meet with every one of you, and just go over your funeral plans. Mm -hmm. Right. And some people were horrified because mm -hmm. uh, some people don't like to think about that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I will say that stuff's only as good as your administrative system, and mm -hmm. I didn't have a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a, hopefully some people benefited from it. Well, you know, Reverend Haynes did a whole series many years ago on thanatology, um, and he did a whole series on um, how, how you prepare for your uh, final days. And he, he, he did a, a, a series. He had the funeral morticians uh, coming into the church, funeral, funeral directors, and they sat with the congregation and spent time talking with us and it was a it was a great preparation time you know we, if you if you just do it once 
Mm-hmm. Some people will avoid it uh, or may not come to mm-hmm. church that Sunday or may not come to mm-hmm. that seminar. Mm-hmm. But if you deal with a series where you make them have to deal with it, I found that more people at 12 Baptist Church was prepared for that day wow. than had he not done it. And, and Yeah, absolutely. And I've Good sat with Reverend Haynes myself. I've been sitting with him for four months preparing, helping him to prepare his and revise his, and we finally got it all done wow. and, and mm-hmm. gave it to the church. But you're right, Randy, things change because the uh, pallbearers, the honorary pallbearers, who you want to speak, the different yeah. people involved, mm-hmm. said, I-, I don't know that person any longer. Or that person went mm-hmm. went home before I did. Or, you, yeah. or yeah. You, you say, I want all these people, but I know my wife doesn't. So mm-hmm. you got to take <laughs> you got to take all of that into consideration, uh, you know, uh, uh, because boy. you know you don't want your wife knocking people out when they come into the church. Oh my goodness! But uh. but but mine is done. It's in a three ring binder, and I have mm. it in a in a place at the house where they can see it. Mm. But he, he, I tried to sit with my family and go over it, and they won't do it. Yeah. Wow. They will yeah. not do it. And, and part of it's because I've had three to four close calls with the heart attacks. Mm-hmm. So they don't, it's so, for in their mind, the trauma of that, having to go over that brings them back to that time. So they don't. So I had to, mm-hmm. so I had to look to other people outside of my family to say, this is where it's at. This is what it looks like in order for them to assist my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, now this piece is going to be funny. Or, well, you guys may not find it funny, but um, I said to Renee, who is our administrator here, and to a couple of the people in the church, I said, so on the day that they, they have my homegoing celebration, I'm going to have, because I'm in the technology, coded on the side of the casket, uh, this little code. You press the number. I gave them a certain code. It's only four numbers. I said, oh. you press that number, I come right back. Oh, I, I come right back, right? <laughs> uh, so I, so I, no, no, Renee is my administrator, right? Has been for years. I say, Renee, I quiz her every once in a while. What's the number? Uh. She says, I can't remember. I said, Renee. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, so I said, you know what? I can't trust you. So I go to the other people that I gave the number and I say, uh-huh. can you guys just recite the number for me? Because I'll come right back. I'll be the pastor again. Mm-hmm. And they, oh, all, they, they all go, we forgot the number. They're terrible. Uh-huh. They're terrible. Uh-huh. <laughs> terrible. Uh-huh. And, what is, and what does that tell you, Bruce? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> he is he, he is loved, revered, and respected. Uh, uh, uh. So, so look at uh, today. Today I'm going to give you two guys the number live on the air, live oh, on goodness. the air. In the event that this day happens, and 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 the people that I love and I thought loved me, all uh-huh. forget the number. Okay? Do you want to write it down? Or do you, uh, yeah. you want to write it down, or you think you can remember the numbers? Uh, text it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna uh, no I'm gonna, because if I text it, it may not get there. Okay, uh, so here here are the four numbers. There are four numbers, guys. Uh-huh. I think you can do this if you try. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Zero 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 zero. Those are the numbers. That's all uh, you got to press, and we're good. Uh, okay, it's too well, hard. Uh, <laughs> I, I I think it was six. Seven, nine, <laughs> See, like that's that. exactly uh-huh. what the people here at the church do. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I know. I now know that I'm truly loved. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, uh, uh. man. Wait, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> you know when <laughs> I uh, uh, I sent off a communique uh, to Twelfth last night, you okay. know, for um, for Dan's funeral, and yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, and uh, oh, you know, I met Dan some forty plus years ago. And uh, it was something about, and I got to know uh, his his mom, the colonel, and uh, so and so. And yet, his cousin, for a while, Cliff Janey, was the superintendent of schools, schools here in yes. York. Yeah. And um, he said, "I want you to be my special advisor." And uh, what the world, you know? So, so I, you know, so my relationship with Dan uh, was great. Whenever we would be up in Boston. Or something like that. He 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 always opened up his parents' home, yeah. you know, for us to stay there, and they were great folks. And that was the first time I ever had beans for breakfast. Uh, first of all, mm. guys, uh-huh. guys, you have a person on the phone who wants to say something to both of you. But before I release this person, uh-huh. the Janies told me that whenever you and Denise stay there, uh, no, we weren't married. 
Nuh-uh. Oh, so I, like no. I said, you two stay. <laughs> oh, it, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that live on the air. Back then, I had some personal interests up there. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> That's right, oh. you did. Oh. But, yeah, but, but, uh, but I was told that, that after you left, something was always missing. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you know what it was? What's that? A tobacco can. <laughs> you know, because he had, uh, he just saved them. I remember uh, later on when uh, he was married and, and he had his favorite chair in the living room. And somewhere around was stacks of tobacco cans. And, uh, you know, he, he smoked a pipe for many years. And, uh, you know, I was just, wow, look at this. Well, uh, Randy, uh, Randy and Stephen, as I let this other person who's on the phone come in, um, Dr. Davis, I, w I would rather have him, if he was going to smoke, I'd rather have him uh, smoke tobacco than what you smoked. Okay, oh. Paula, go ahead. You're live on the air. Ah! <laughs> Carla, are what, you? what is wrong with you guys this morning? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning. Pickles. Good morning. How are you? Well, thank you. Great. I just wanted to add a little something that um, Bruce and Stephen, I don't think you know about this. And Randy, tell your wife, Joan, that she is welcome to be part of the club. So okay. we we also have um, a set of codes, if you will, oh. for people that we never liked, for people that were mean to you guys, and for people who, who we never wanted at your funeral or your home going. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And when and when those people arrive, people know what to do. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> see, I told you guys. I told you guys. <laughs> my my I, goodness. See, I I have I have in my funeral packet all the people that i'd like to be there right uh -huh. mm -hmm. but but then i have an alternative group of people <laughs> that i know will be acceptable to my family you, uh -uh. you know what i'm well, saying mm -hmm. well, uh, well you know who had it down jot and tittle was uh uh dear friend uh the elwood. late elwood ellis yeah. this guy had it that i mean he he had he wanted this he wanted that he wanted he wanted folks to fly in from across the country, and you know I'm saying, wow, mm -hmm. this woo, you know. Well, uh, he, you know what he did for like a year or two before the funeral, he went around and saw each of those people, wow, uh, and a and asked them personally if they would do this particular thing at his funeral service. Wow. Mm. And uh, at the funeral, everybody recounted. Uh, how it was! It shocked them when Elward had done that. Wow! And and it was obvious that he knew mm. uh, that his death was getting close. Wow! And uh, some 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 health issue was there, but he didn't tell anybody. Wow! But he, he was going around getting all of his dear friends mm -hmm. and people that he had uh, that God had used him in their lives mm -hmm. and uh, wanted them to say a word. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was uh, quite interesting, and I think what did, what did he have? Three or four different funerals. Mm. I mean, we had services in Atlanta, yeah, in Newark, uh -huh. Virginia Beach. Are you serious? I mean, yes, you sure did. Yeah, uh huh. Karen, did you know that? No, I didn't. Okay, well, um, I'm de I'm gonna outdo him. We're gonna have five. <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness! Uh, uh. Okay. W one in Tennessee, you know, one in New Jersey for my fans in New Jersey, <laughs> one in Boston. Uh, if you have it in, in, in Jersey, we could sell out my living room. Uh, <laughs> Karen? You know, for, for those who would, Karen, you know, uh, Karen are you going to let him talk that way to and, me? Uh, and, and, uh, yeah. And for, yeah. Our, for our listeners, it's a small living room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but I guarantee you we'll sell it out. And, uh, you know, for, for folks to uh, be, you You're know. terrible. Stephen, Stephen, you're terrible. Uh, we're we're no. lifelong friends. See, I don't crack jokes. Um, I just talk, and it happens to be funny. Yeah. You uh, are intentionally uh, cracking jokes, and you're hurting. Mm. You're, you're hurting. Po po you know how serious <laughs> past, Pastor mm. Randy is? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, can, I, can I just cut in so I can get off, please? I get uh, yes, man. Uh, I thought you were going to be our co-host for the yeah. future. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you guys, you're way above my pay grade. <laughs> so I'm going to go and um, get ready for work. Have a great conversation, you guys. 
but seriously, uh, Randy, if Joan wants mm. in on that code and how to get rid of people that we never wanted to be around you guys in the first place, <laughs> oh, totally give me a Okay, uh, okay. What is what are the four code numbers? <laughs> Who said anything about four code numbers? <laughs> uh, see, guys. Uh -huh. No, I'm talking about at my funeral the code numbers you put in if you want me to. Come oh, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. Uh, 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 oh, she got it. She got it. Oh, okay, good. All right. I mean, okay, zero chance it. it's going to happen. <laughs> 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 But because you're in Jesus Christ, you are coming back. Amen. Thank you. Thank but, you. Uh -huh. but, but hopefully not at the funeral home. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. Right. I'm telling you. Oh, wow. my gosh. Yeah. I, I, I thought you meant our, our code numbers, which are not nearly as complex. They're just thumbtacks <laughs> in, the, in the appropriate seats. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, <laughs> my plans are just like in Westminster Abbey. I'm going to be uh, in, oh, in planted and interred on the floor of the church, <laughs> you know, so, you know. On the floor of the church? Yes, that's where yeah. I must be interred. So people you know, that is funny at <sighs> Westminster Abbey because you, you actually walk across the gravestone that's right, of, Darwin, sure do. of Darwin. Wow. And, uh, yep. other famous people. Wow. And you kind of say, oh, I'm glad I'm walking on this guy. Wow. There you go. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. I don't... <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, That's true. Uh, uh. That's true, though. That's true. Mm. Well, Kay, hey, uh, let's, Kay, can Kay, we talk about funerals for a moment? Yes, sure. I, I want to say goodbye to Karen. Karen, I'll see you oh, tonight at, at the uh, at the service. Karen, I'll see you tonight at home. <laughs> Kay, get him off the air. <laughs> <laughs> I, le I lost my key, but uh, you know it's all right. <laughs> Karen, do you hear him? Oh, she's gone. She's oh, gone. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Randy. Uh, well, I just, I think it might be helpful uh, if we talk a little bit about funerals. Yep, I uh -huh. and, we uh, would. Uh, last Sunday, uh, I was preaching at a church, and a young man that had been in my church some years ago, um, he was reminding me, he said, you know, when this man uh, passed away in the church, I was at his funeral, he said, mm -hmm. and when you came in at the back of the church, and all of us, you know, we were all sitting down, all of a sudden we heard your voice over the microphone, Jesus said, mm. I am the resurrection and the life. Mm. Oh. He, said, he said, it just sent chills down my spine, and then you said, let us stand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, I walked down in front of the coffin, quoting the scripture, and uh, I told him, I said, man, I learned that from the black church. Mm. Uh, I learned, you know, how important processionals are, uh -huh. and as you walk in, you just quote the great scriptures of resurrection uh -huh. and of eternal life, Right, and it just sets the service off to a great start. All right. And so that just reminded me of how important the elements in a funeral might be. So uh -huh. which ones uh, do you like, do you guys really enjoy in a, in a gospel-centered, godly funeral? That's a good question. Well, going to what you said, the procession for me is extremely important in the reading of Scripture. It sets the right tone mm -hmm. at the beginning. And for the many mm -hmm. non-believers who are there, they may be hearing the word for the first time in a context that mm -hmm. they can relate to personally, number one. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two, one of the elements of a, of a service is for the believer is the homegoing context where there is celebration mm -hmm. and when whenever i'm a part of a service here at global ministries and we're celebrating the person i can see a lot of the quote-unquote roman catholic friends of the deceased coming in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they are not used to this high mm -hmm. level of celebration at all mm -hmm. but they're mm -hmm. clapping they're singing you know mm -hmm. and they're engaged mm -hmm. right. and they usually mm -hmm. approach me after the service and say how much it, 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 it meant in their lives. Mm. And then the third yeah. thing about a, a, a service is I never put people, I never put people in heaven. I, I never put them there. Mm. As well no, as, no. you know, I never do that. Um, especially, especially when I know nothing about the person oh, absolutely. and their testimony. Mm. But, right. I, but mm. I've been to many funerals where the pastor puts people there yeah 
yeah. And and oh, relax yeah. and relaxes people in the congregation. They're so relaxed because their attitude is that if that person can go, then I I don't have a problem. I, my life oh, doesn't yeah. have to change at all. So those mm -hmm. those are three dynamics for me. You know, um, we uh, do the processional, and usually I'm reading Psalm one. Blessed is the man who, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I usually do that so that by the time I get up to the lectern. Um, and uh, I've gone through Psalm 1, Psalm 27, and uh, mm -hmm. and then I usually, one of the first things I tell the congregants who's there, what Amos said, prepare to meet your God. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and I've had people uh, tell me at the recessional when I'm standing at the door, you know, I'm prepared, I'm prepared, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, I hope I'm giving you instructions on how to be prepared. And uh, so, you know, I, you know, for me, I buried both of my parents. Mm -hmm. I buried my brother. Mm -hmm. I buried uh, my both of my in-laws. And I don't know how many, you know, in, in between. And mm -hmm. each one has a special effect mm -hmm. in terms of I always think afterwards, Ah, you forgot to say this, or you know, you forgot mm. to do that, and everything. And unless I really know the individual, and I, and I tell them they're in the presence of God right mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know, um, but you got to know them. You can't, you know. I, and then I've also done some crazy funerals. Uh, mm. One, I literally had to tell everybody in the in the funeral home who was there to get out because they were starting a fight. Mm. And uh, yeah, and then we did a funeral recently that, um, and this was a family member of a, of a member of the church that, of uh, uh, both even know Elizabeth and Lyons Avenue. After the funeral, they actually went out in the street, stopped the traffic because the person I was uh, uh, who was dead was a gang member, mm -hmm. and they literally had blocked off the street with their mm. cars and. And and, and and oh, it was a mess mm. uh, to the point yeah. I had to tell the family, we will not do another funeral of your family in this church. Mm. I mean, we we will you, you know we will be glad to be there with you in the funeral home, but never, not 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 in this church because it was horrible. Oh Lord, they wanted to fight. They um, oh oh, it was something. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Well, you know that. That brings up uh, something that Mrs. Wall mentioned, and that is people coming to your funeral uh, that maybe your widow or uh, your children, they know caused you trouble in your life. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. how do you uh, handle that? Or they're there to sort, you know, you, you, we sometimes have people in the church, They that's their moment. They want to get up on the microphone. Oh, Lord. Uh -huh. And talk talk about how wonderful you were. Everybody's sitting there saying, "Now you, you didn't have anything to do with this person." That's mm -hmm. right. You know, mm -hmm. you, 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 you. This is your moment of glory, mm -hmm. and and you're going to steal it from Jesus and the deceit. Mm -hmm. You know, and you mm -hmm. almost want to get up and say, "Look, this funeral's not about you." Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Or um, you know, yeah, you have experiences like that. I I knew um, uh, in Virginia, I did this funeral of a young man who was killed leaving the house that he had just robbed. And uh, uh, and uh, the, the mother of the, of the boy, oh, it was horrible. She wanted, she, uh, she stopped the funeral, you know, to take pictures with the body. It was horrible. Wow. It was horrible. And, uh, mm. uh, and or the one that rode the casket down the aisle of the church. What do you mean, oh, rode yeah. the casket? What she jumped mean? on it. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, she jumped on it, oh. and uh, <laughs> yeah, and they and they rolled it out, you know. Uh, oh, what? yeah, uh, there uh. Be, there, yeah. I, I, crazy I, things happen at funerals. Right, I've had I, I had two. One is you guys may or may not remember in Boston, there was a funeral at a Morningstar Baptist Church, and there was it was a gang person who was alleged to have been involved in the gang. Uh -huh. The rival gang came in. 
I remember that. Blocked the entrances, and if I'm correct, started a fight and started stabbing people. Yeah, I remember you. I remember that. That was some years ago. Yeah, yeah, that started a movement of change in our city because of that. But people were saying that because the church had not had was all inside and not out on the streets, the young people had no respect for the building at all. It was just a regular building Mm -hmm. to them. They didn't understand. And then more, mm. more recently I had a funeral and I, I shared with the family, let's, let's have a program and let's stay with the program. And if you, it, I, I don't like having multiple people speak uh-huh. either before mm. the message or after the message. Uh-huh. And so what happened is that we had, we had, um, Hi, this is Jeremiah. I'm we, in- we had just a few people speak. And then one of the speakers said, if anybody... I, I just saw the words coming out of their mouth. If anybody wants to say something, line mm. up over there, line up oh over there. Oh, Lord. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't run fast enough to tackle the person uh. before it all came out. You should have seen people lining up from the front of the church to the uh, back. The, yeah. the, 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 the funeral director was looking at me like, we have to be at the, at the cemetery at a certain mm. time. Right. And I tried to yeah. figure out how to handle this. When everybody is lined up and they're all getting up to speak, and I went to the person who made the statement and I said, I want want to remind you that we have this discussion. You cannot do this. You now have to go back to the microphone Mm. and let people know that they could speak during the the repass, but they cannot speak now. Mm. I felt that they Mm. had to do it, not me. Mm. And Mm. they got up. And they said, I'm sorry that we were not going to be able to allow this now. And everybody went back to their seats. I was horrified mm. because you never know what people are going to say. And as mm-hmm. some, one of you just said, sometimes you have people come up and speak who are not really friends with that person. Mm. And they're mm-hmm. just reciting stories that mm. do not make any sense at all. We had mm. one that when we had these people who wanted to get up and speak. And I, I, at, at that point, I tell people, you know, I said, I'm in control of this. So if I think you're going too long, I'm going to stop you. So you say that publicly? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, oh. the, the, the mother of the person we were burying uh, said, well, I booked this place for three hours. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, wow. and, and she didn't book nothing. <laughs> and uh, we were kind enough um Wow. To, to let her have the service. She didn't have any money and everything. We said, fine, no problem. You could do it. But she got up there when I stopped them. I booked this place for three hours. Wow. And, uh, oh, Lord. Yeah, I've had some wow. interesting times. In, in funeral. Well, you know, I, that, that's one of the issues, I think, about having a funeral in the funeral home or the church. I, mm-hmm. I always encourage my people to have the funeral at the church. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if they're part of the church, especially, and yeah, uh, and I, you know, and then the question comes: Who's in charge? Mm. You know, is the pastor in charge, or is the family in charge? Mm. And there, that is a uh, very delicate negotiation mm-hmm. where you sit. You, you know, pastors need to sit down with the family and say, oh, "What do you want?" And how can I, you know, make you, you know the the deceased? What were their wishes? How can uh-huh. I try to help? make those things happen right oh but yeah i do want you to know this is a worship service mm-hmm. uh-huh. we're here to give glory to god we're mm-hmm. not going to do anything stupid mm-hmm. and and i'm not going to allow anything mm-hmm. to be done that's stupid mm-hmm. in terms of uh dishonoring the lord or making a mockery of the lord jesus christ mm-hmm. that that's not i'm not i can't let that happen right right and mm-hmm. so you know that those are very sensitive times um but we have had some absolutely great funerals at New City. Mm. We we often do an open mic, mm. especially if it's a well-known person. Yes. But I I do uh, referee that. I, I stand there at the pulpit and I say, mm. you have two minutes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you hear me coughing behind you, that means sit down. Mm. And uh, and I always let the family members finish that time. Right. And But I, I always ask them first. Do you want anybody else to speak? Right. Mm. And a lot of times families say no. Sometimes they don't want to say anything. Right. Mm. You know? Right. 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 Uh, but uh, we uh, we have had, I mean, unlike 
you know, and I've had people say, oh, man, when I die, could New City do my funeral? Mm. And I said, well, you're not part of the church. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you got to earn that, baby. There you go. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Wow. You, you could have it at New City, but you're not going to have a New City funeral. There you what go. I mean by uh-huh. that, you know, is our choir turns out. And uh, we're, we're close. We always close it with the same song, "Death Is Ended," written by our musician James Ward. James yeah. Ward. Uh-huh. And and that is a glorious. It's a glorious hymn to die to. Let me tell you. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Now, uh, uh. Ha- talk to me, both of you guys. Talk to me about altar calls at your homegoing services because on some occasions I do do it. And I'm very surprised at the response. Uh, what do you guys do regarding altar calls? I do an, um, uh, we're familiar with an invitation mm-hmm. and uh, ask the people to respond by raising their hands. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not to have them come up because I, I know for, for my church, uh, th- that would just be a mess in terms of trying to deal with the body and having people come up and everything. It's kind of crazy. So I usually do an invitation for the people to respond mm-hmm. by raising their hands or speaking to me or one of the other um, associate pastors, you know, you know, uh, mm-hmm. when they're leaving or something like that. And then we try to set up something uh, where yeah. we can actually do that type of, uh, you know, personal work. Mm. Mm-hmm. Randy, what well, you? I don't, I don't usually do it, mm-hmm. but. Um, I have no objection to it. I just mm-hmm. think you have to be really wise, mm-hmm. uh, kind of coordinate, especially with, you know, again, do you have to get to the cemetery at a certain yeah. time? Yeah, uh-huh. right. right. What, what do the funeral directors want you to do at the close? And uh, uh, and by the way, funeral directors work for you. You don't work for them. They, thank you. Uh, Absolutely. Uh-huh. Uh, so you, you've, got, you've got to maintain some control and direction oh, yeah. of that. Uh-huh. But I absolutely believe in preaching the gospel. Amen. Amen. And uh-huh. I think to waste that opportunity to call people to faith mm-hmm. is a real shame. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the moment of death. I remember asking my pastor, Wil- uh, Grover Wilcox, uh, I said, how do you uh, preach a funeral of somebody you know is not a Christian? And mm-hmm. he said, I always say, if they could be here right now, mm. this is what they would tell you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. and, I, and I got it. I said, oh, okay. So uh-huh. they now face the judgment. Oh, and right. They would, just like the rich man and Lazarus, if right. he could go back and tell my friends, there you go. don't live this way. Right. Uh, but, uh, 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 right. Uh, you know. Right. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I, I, I really believe uh, sometimes for some people, this is the only chance they're going to face the issue of death. Right. That's right. And and the the reality of their guilt before God. Mm-hmm. And if we don't tell them that Jesus died for their sins and can yeah. forgive them, yeah. mm. I think we have failed as preachers. Right. Yes. Right. Well, I I have had some funerals here of of young men who have been involved in the street life, and I remember the first one I had what a young man was actually shot in his head riding a bike mm. and it, it just mm. devastated the whole church it dev- he used to sit up mm-hmm. in the balcony trying to make a decision and when we had the funeral the different gang members came in and they would stand in the back and just just stand in the back mm-hmm. then a group of them would walk down and salute him because again they weren't church going young people they mm-hmm. didn't know how to do this um, mm. but at, at, at some of the funerals where you have a lot of young people, uh, you, sometimes the church is filled to capacity with young people. Mm. Um, I speak specifically; it's an evangelistic message, and uh-huh. and I give the altar call, and I and I ask people to stand if they want to make a commitment, and I take mm. them. I just mm. take them through the process, mm. and when I'm through, and and people um, say that they believe, people are applauding. Mm. Um, mm. I've, I've had some funerals, and again, this is an all. But I've had a few where I felt I had to call them forward. I had to mm. take them just beyond standing up. And again, mm. this is not every funeral, but you, the spirit speaks to you and tells you when you should do it. Mm. And, yeah. and, and yeah. they, you know, and they have come forward. Uh, no problems with the casket. No problems with the funeral director. You knew that the Lord was telling you, 
in, mm. in this one instance, this is what you need to do. Mm. And, Hallelujah. You know, and people have come to me afterwards. But again, we have to, we have to, a homegoing service, we have mm. to listen to what the Spirit is saying. Mm. Yes. Yes. You know, that's why yeah. I usually, again, I can't understand how some ministers could do a funeral and not have uh, had yes, or taken the opportunity to meet with the family. I, I don't understand that. To me, uh, you, you know, um, uh, two days or so before the funeral, I'm yeah. with the family. Um, yeah. You know, we're talking over plans. You know, is there anything specifically you want me to say? Or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I, I pretty much... Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll do that. That's why I encourage that for the folks to talk and do all that. Let's do it at the viewing, which is usually <laughs> the day before the funeral. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I encourage you know if you want to say something, you know, now uh, because we are uh, at, at a, a limited time, and I, I think it's nationwide that if you do a funeral on a Saturday, mm -hmm. you better have that body. They are at the cemetery before 12 noon because mm. I know here the uh, union, uh, they got to pay like double time or something like that if you go over, you know, the mm. 12 noon time. And I explained that to the family. They said, okay, we'll get out there. Mm. Or, 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 or uh, you're going to have the honorary Paul Bears digging the hole. That's what you're going to have. <laughs> we, we, we have a caller. Caller, go ahead. You're live on the air with Pastor Randy and Pastor Davis. But good, good morning, all you good-looking young men. This oh, morning. she must be talking to me. <laughs> yes. God bless you. Uh, yes, I am. I'm talking to each and every one of you. The other um, two are old, it's so man. Good to, it's so good to to, uh, to hear you again and to know that you're well, uh, uh, um, a pastor. Mm. I'm calling you specialists though for Pastor Randy. Mm. Uh, last the last uh, broadcast you had, and I heard that Pastor Randy was going to be here. Is it this month or next month in Boston? Uh, in July. You you come in July, Pastor Randy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I don't know if you remember me, but uh, I was a little black woman uh, at uh, Christ the King when you came. Before we had a a, a beautiful uh, uh, conversation, and um. I just wanted to let you know that when you come this time, I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Well, thank See, you. You're, you're, a, you're a southerner. You're a southerner, and I'm a southerner. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> ma'am. He's a. Uh, he's yeah, actually. Just, he's not a southerner. He's a. You know, he, he he's not a Dixocrat, but uh, you yeah. know, because he, he's actually from New Jersey. No, no, he was born in in Tennessee, right? Thank you, Stephen. He's a southerner. <laughs> he's a, he's a, no, he's a southerner. Uh, <laughs> he's a southerner. He's a time in southern jails, but other than that, I... <laughs> well, thank and, and you so I, much. I, I had been hearing you, up. and I, it just dawned on me, yes, that's Pastor Randy. He was at Christ yeah. the King. La yeah. um, was it last year? Yeah, I, I get up about once a year. Yeah, at least. Yeah, it, it was either last year or the year before. But anyway, God bless you all. It's good to, to hear you, you young fellows. Uh, oh. Thank you, Reverend. Thank Betty. you, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bless God you. bless. God bless you too. Uh, 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 bye bye. Uh, hey, uh, could I bring up uh, another subject? Sure, go ahead. Sure. Uh, this has to do with the shooting at the synagogue in California. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it turns out. You know, I'm a Presbyterian, and uh, there's a, a, a sister denomination of ours called the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Right. And this young man, uh, his family was a member really? of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Escondido. Uh huh. And uh, unfortunately, the pa and the pastor said, you know, he this young man never came to Sunday school, he never came to youth group, but his family was part of the church, mm -hmm. and by age 19. I guess he had become pretty immersed in white supremacy mm. and anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, as we know now, he got an AR-15 and he went to a synagogue and killed a lady and shot three other people, including the rabbi. Mm. And, you know, this kind of hits close to home because uh, his church, that denomination, is faithful 
mm. in preaching the gospel, preaching the Bible, mm. and, and and as a church, of course, they do not preach white supremacy. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are always young people in our congregations who I call isolated. They are off by themselves, and mm. they're not in the heart of the church. Uh-huh. And and often their own parents don't know what what the devil is using them to deceive them. It could be drugs, it could be some radical ideology, mm. it, it's certainly some unbelief or worldliness. But I, I just say we need to wake up and pay attention to young people who are on the periphery of our congregations. Mm. And we really need to pray for them and talk to their parents and say, where are they, where they're, where they're head at, can I get with them? Can I meet with them? Mm-hmm. This this is such a, a shameful, mm-hmm. tragic thing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Jewish people are to be protected and honored, as Amen. all people are. Amen. And anti-Semitism has no place mm-hmm. in, 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 in the Christian community, in God's people. That's it right. It's a, a work of Satan. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. I, do. I, I appreciate that. Some years ago, I did a funeral of a young man who took his own life, and uh, I, I, you guys know the church. We had for the viewing, we had over a thousand people in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they literally filled the sanctuary, the foyer, the other building, and because of this young man and. Uh, I remember having to meet with our young people because of the nonsense, you know, you take your own life, you're going to hell, and, and stuff like that. And we had to bring out, you know, the biblical truth. And um, some of them were, were were really affected by it. One was my mm. son, because they mm. had gone to school together. Mm. And, um, you know, and he just, he, he was he was broken by it. Mm-hmm. But I, I thank the Lord we were able to sit down and talk with him and let him know, you know, what does, don't tell me what so-and-so, what does the Bible say? And um, mm-hmm. it really affected him. And that, you know, I, I thank the Lord that, you know, we were able to get to our young people so that they, some of those folks might have been straddling the fence of dealing with issues like this. And, yeah. you know, you, you, you really have to take the time to meet with them and I, but I appreciate that. that I'm thinking right now of a, of a young man in my church, Lord Jesus, that he's like that. He's somewhat standoffish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, great parents. But I, I, I just, as soon as you said that, I, I focused on seeing him mm-hmm. Sunday mm-hmm. after church and, uh, everyone had stand for the benediction. He was sitting down. Mm. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, oh, man, I just... Uh, you know, it, it, it raises the other question. Uh, about two months ago, I went to the Nation of Islam for a job fair that mm-hmm. was being held there. They uh-huh. weren't. It wasn't theirs, but it was being held there, and the place was packed. And uh-huh. as I as I was going into the mosque, I knew that I was going to be frisked mm. because they, the ladies go to one side, the men go to the other side, and, and, they, and they frisk you. And while they're frisking mm-hmm. you, they're talking to you to help relax you uh-huh. because, you know, you're not used to this. And, and um, they said, do you have any pens on you? And I said, yes, I have a pen in my pocket. So they retrieved the pen. They unscrewed it and looked at it to make sure there was nothing in there. And mm-hmm. then they finally let me go in. And, I, you know, and I... And I Going in, I felt I felt that that was so much of an intrusion. I just said, to come into the mosque or to the church, I'm, I'm having to go through all of this is a little bit too much. Mm. And again, after all of these shootings, I I, I I just thought about our own church, mm. and especially mm. now that we have the radio and TV station here, and we have you know people people hear us every day. They hear the gospel every day. And it, mm. it just makes you a target, and I'm, mm. and I, you know, and I ask myself the question: Are we at a point where the churches are going to have to begin to check people before they come in, or mm. are people at a point of saying, "Dear God, may we never have to do that"? But I, I, I understand in many countries outside of the United States, they have to do that now. 
Mm. What are your thoughts? Mm. Mm. I think we well, have to be aware of that. I'm sorry, Randy. You know, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. No, I just think we have to be aware of it with that and not take the attitude of "oh, this can't happen to us" or you know, we're believers. The first mass shooting in uh, in a in a school happened at a Christian school mm. in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Mm. Mm. And um, you know, you know, so don't you know get the impression that oh, it can't happen to us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I know an awful lot of churches now have security. Oh yeah, and um, this synagogue actually had a security guard. Mm. who was an off-duty Border Patrol policeman. Wow. And uh, he got there after the young man mm. was getting into his car to leave. Mm. Wow. And wound up, uh, you know, he wound up uh, taking some shots at the young man and hit his car. But he wasn't, uh, you know, you have we have a police officer at our church. Uh -huh. And, you know, obviously if somebody is intent, I'm walking in and shooting people. They're going to be watching for your one police officer or your one security guard. Uh -huh. And as soon as he walks around the back of the parking lot, that's when they walk in and start doing the shooting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately, there is no safety outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. There, there is no safety out of, out, uh, out of just trusting in the Lord. You, so many people, you know, will say, I don't want to live in the inner city. There's so much violence there. Mm. And then, and I said, well, why don't you move to Connecticut, to the town where that kid walked in and killed all those kids in the That's right. elementary mm. school. I mean, living in the suburbs or the city, you, you still have to trust God with your life. Mm. Amen. Because we live in a world of violence. Mm -hmm. But I do think uh, congregations and churches have to be aware of that we're all targets. Anywhere there's a, a crowd, anywhere mm -hmm. uh, some idiot can make a name for himself, mm -hmm. which is often the reason for the mass shootings. It's really a, an issue often not just of anger or hatred. It's also an issue of ego. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the news. I'm going to be, mm -hmm. you know, even if, if, if it's bad news, even if everybody thinks I'm an evil person, I'm going to make a name for myself. Mm -hmm. And... That is one horrible, horrible thing about America, you know, that we we live in this kind of a, a celebrity life. Mm -hmm. If your name isn't known for at least 15 minutes, you know, there was nothing significant about your life. Mm -hmm. God, uh, God help us. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, know, uh, you know, we're talking about a terroristic thing, but it's also another form of terrorism is folks who will come in to rob a church. Mm -hmm. Um you know, uh, I know of churches uh, in Newark that's been robbed. And, uh, you know, you got to do something, you know, about that. So we put out a plan for our deacons as to, you know, wh what to do. You know, some folks will come to church and look at, you know, how they handle the offering money. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll try to, you know, look at that in terms of plotting what, you know, what they'll do. So, again, you know, Lord Jesus, you know... Uh, it, it, now, if they rob my church, they would be disappointed and probably <laughs> give us money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They'll feel bad for you. So. Yeah, they oh, man, this is, man, uh, yeah, take Dang. that, take that. Yeah, really, you know. Well, uh, uh, there, uh, is a, there is a suburban church that I've preached at on occasion, and uh, they have three services. They have, I think, five campuses, and... Uh, when I just before I go into the pulpit, the security person approaches me, and he's not in uniform, of course. He's incognito, mm -hmm. and he just says, I, "I am with you, no matter where you turn. I'm mm -hmm. with you." Um, yes. I, I, you know, I do not know that if a shooter comes in and has come in on multiple occasions to scout the church out, if they would even know, because he he's good at what he does. I can't mm -hmm. even find him. I I look out mm -hmm. while I'm preaching. I'm saying, I. Where are you? Who are you? <laughs> but 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 it, it is something that the church has to think about because I was uh, last thing I'll say uh, we have about two minutes left. There, uh, I, I can't tell you what country it was in. It could be in China. There was a uh, they were demolishing churches in this country, and mm. one one of the churches had fifty thousand members, and I, they showed the toppling. They were just destroying all of the church structures and buildings, and mm -hmm. um, it's happening all over the world. It's happening. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and Randy, you're right. We can really only trust Jesus for, um, for our health, for our uh-huh. well-being, for our lives. Mm-hmm. I do know of a church in the south end of Boston where the pastor stood at the back of the church and he was shaking people's hands and a young lady came up with a razor blade and just went across his face. Um, so oh. these things do oh. happen. But um, our trust us does have to be in the Lord. But there are also some things that we can prepare to slow this whole process down. So, mm. yeah. guys, I'll give you the final word. I think of that oh. hymn. Jesus be a fence. <laughs> mm. And Lord, you know, you know, all around me every day. Yeah. And you yeah. know, we really have to take that as serious. Well Jesus told us to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we we need to be people of peace. Mm-hmm. People who turn the other cheek, people who are willing to die mm-hmm. for our faith. Mm-hmm. Uh but we also need to be wise. We don't Amen. need to be foolish about the evil that's in the world. Right. And so may the Holy Spirit help each one of us not to live our lives in fear. Amen. But to trust God. Amen. We love him. And, and we're safe in him. Go, yea, go, I walk mm. through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. I will fear no evil. Amen. For thou art with me. Mm. Thank you, brothers. We've taken a lot of turns uh, with this broadcast, but I, I, at each turn, the presence of the Lord has been with us, and mm-hmm. people who are listening have had their lives touched. I can see it on Facebook Live, and uh, I thank you guys for, for being with us today. God bless thank you. Thank you. Okay. You too, brother. Okay, talk to you next Bye-bye. week. Bye-bye. Take care. That was uh, Dr. Stephen Davis and Pastor Randy Navis from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Dr. Davis is from... Newark, New Jersey, and we're going to be right back with Siddiqui Campbell with the Black Power Hour right here on the Boston Praise Radio and TV Network. So stay right there. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back to bring you more hope, to bring you clarity regarding your future, and to inspire you with a message. Come on, high. It would be much too late.